entrance, uh, tag number 831-8H15. Really need you to move it because you're blocking an entrance. That's blue Ford F-150 pickup. If you would, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been a good day. I don't know about you, but it's been a good, good day. This worship experience has been wonderful. Uh, the loving and kind spirit uh, that the church has uh, done in giving and supporting those who are continuing their education. I think it is wonderful. Macedonia, you are blessed. You're, you're a blessed church. We were talking the other day concerning giving. I'm gonna move. We, we talked the other, day, uh, the other day concerning giving. And this adage that you've heard all your life about it being more blessed to give than it is to receive. Really, the blessing is in the giving. Uh, not, not giving, expecting anything in return, but just having the ability to be able to give, that's the blessing. If you don't ever get anything in return, just having the ability to give is the blessing. And so, Macedonia, you're blessed, and we thank God for a blessing blessing you to be a blessing to others as I look around in the audience this is Father's Day and, and you know notice I didn't even say Father's Day in my introduction uh, today because most of the time men we're overlooked there's a reason behind that because when I look out in the audience I still see more women than I do men. And if I was really able to take a poll, most women in here got a man. And if you got a man and you're here and they're not here, I mean, it's just something's wrong with the picture. And so it ought to be just as many men here as it is women. Because again, I don't want you to raise your hand, but you know, if you got a man, So we get overlooked. We, we get overlooked. We, we get overlooked. But, but it's not anybody's fault but ours. Nobody's fault but ours. We're, we're losing generations. And we're losing generations not because of the child. But we're losing generations because of us. Many have gotten theirs, now have the attitude, I got mine. You get yours the best way you can. That's not the way it should be. Jesus was always concerned about bringing somebody else along with you. What good is it, you, is it for you to make it somewhere and not invite somebody else to come? with you what good is it for you to be saved and not extend an invitation to someone who is unsaved to receive salvation just as you did what good is it we're losing generations because we're not reaching back and bringing those along with us jesus told a parable the other day in luke's gospel chapter 15 Y'all have heard it read many times over. In fact, when you go back to the beginning of the chapter, the whole chapter talks about lost and found. Um, beginning of the chapter talks about the importance of being prepared and being ready and making sure whatever's lost is found and kept. Because there was a woman who had uh, a necklace that was adorned. And it was given to her that she would take care of it until she was ready to wed her groom. 
somewhere in the process of the betrothal stage, she lost a piece of that jewelry. And she searched the house, lifted up the bed and swept in the corners. She did everything. She didn't rest until she found that which was lost. And she was so happy that she couldn't keep it to herself. But she went and knocked on the neighbor's door to let the neighbor know the thing that was lost had now been found. She was excited and she wanted other folks to be excited that what she had lost had now been found. I'm waiting on somebody this morning to wake up. You came in here sleep. You still sleep. But can I just get somebody here this morning that can look back over your life and thank God for what God has done in your life? There was a time you were lost and needed to be found. And when God in his own infinite wisdom stopped by your house one day, you received the gift of salvation and the Holy Ghost. And that's something to be happy about. And somebody here this morning ought not be ashamed. But you ought to go and knock on somebody's door. I mean go to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. I'm glad that I've been born again. We too ashamed to own our God. But yet we find ourselves on our knees asking God for this, asking God for that. Can you do this? Fix that. Work on this. Touch that. Go to the hospital. Go to the nursing home. But I need somebody to take about two minutes to do as God told Moses. Stand still and look around and see what the Lord is already doing. Oh, I know you're needing to do something, but can I get five or six to celebrate with me and look around and see what God is already doing? I need somebody this morning that has a praise on the inside that you've been waiting to do it right now. If you've been waiting to praise him, I want to tell you right now, you ain't got to wait no longer. If you know he been good to you, can I get somebody to scream in this place? Yeah! We too sophisticated. We, we've gotten too sanctimonious. And we've got too many rules and regulations. Can I get somebody to take your bulletin and get it in your hand? Can I get five or six to grab your bulletin and reach halfway that bulletin and rip it in half and then throw it in the air and let somebody know I came to lift him up. I don't care what's on the program. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Has he done anything for you? Can I get somebody to just open up your mouth? You ain't open up your mouth all morning. But can I get somebody to open up your mouth and tell God thank you? I'm sorry, John and Ruth, I'm sorry. But we too busy worrying about what's happening next. You might not even get to the next. I need some right now, folk, that know that you know that you know that you serve a right now God. And anything you ask of God, you ain't gotta wait till tomorrow for him to do it. But you got faith enough to believe that he can do it right now. Do I have it right now, folk? Oh, I wish you'd high five your neighbor. Tell your neighbor right now. Right now, right now. In fact, I 
want you to do something else. Because some of y'all ain't even got out y'all seat since you got here. And that seat is tired of you. Holding on to them like that. I want you to get up for about 30 seconds. In fact, can we do it for about 60 seconds? I want y'all over here to make your way over there. I want y'all over here to make y'all way over here and somewhere in the middle. I need you to let somebody know just how good God is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
until we start entering in that way we gonna miss a lot of what God has I'm gonna say that again until we start entering in that way we're going to miss a lot of what God has for us man you're so stressed got all this weight and you come in heavy and guess what you leave heavy but somebody ought to feel feel real good right now I don't know about y'all but I, I feel real good I feel so good that if you believe that Jesus died and rose again and he still lives, can I get an amen But to the sinner man that's here today and have not received Christ, if you're here today, I want you to know that Jesus died for you because he loved you. You know why we truly celebrate Father's Day? Because God our Father loved us so much that he gave his only son. You, you know why we really celebrate Father's Day? It's because our Father, which art in heaven, loved us enough that he sent his one and only begotten son to die on a cross for your sins and mine. And early the third day morning, he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And now everyone behind him has the opportunity to believe in him by faith and receive salvation. If you're here today and you have not received Christ as your Savior, we offer Christ to you right now. The door to the Father's house is open. In fact, just in case you didn't know, it was open when we came in here this morning. But if you need a special invitation, now is your time. The invitation is extended to you right now. I wouldn't wait another day knowing that I wasn't safe and secure in the arms of Jesus. Today is a good day to give your life to him. Maybe you're saved and you need some stability in your life. You've been going from church to church and you, and you can't find that place that feels like home. But you've been coming around here for a while and this feels kind of like home. And you want to be a part of these baptized believers in Christ. If you're here today, I extend an invitation for those who are saved but looking for a church home. I extend an invitation for you to come right now. maybe you have a church home but you're not comfortable in your current church home setting and this is the place where you feel the presence of God you want to become a member of this the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church if you're here today come on come on Come on.